para mga teachers, si Sir Josh Kapule and Sir Ronald Phillips. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Luisa. And uh, good morning uh, sa ating lahat. We thank uh, uh, the AC for this opportunity for the DSM to Sir Ariel for giving us this uh, privilege, this opportunity to stand before you uh, this morning and share about uh, the trends and the uh, issues in church music today. We all agree that the music, the music uh, played uh, an important uh, role in the lives of the believers and even in the church, uh, both in the past and uh, in the present. Uh, we all benefit from uh, the ministry of this gift that God has given all of us. And so, may pong umaga ay hindi naman po kami preacher, no? Uh, allow us to share, just uh, share to you some of the things that we could uh, uh, share about this uh, area. And hopefully later, uh, may time pa tayo, we can spend it uh, if you have questions. Uh, pwede natin isama sa uh, discussion na. I've asked uh, Sir uh, Ronald uh, to, to help me and also to share yung mga iba rin niyang nalalaman ito po sa music. Uh, so, may introduce ko siya ngayon sa inyo. Siya muna, uh, para kung marami siyang sasabihin, wala na akong time later. <laughs> uh, I'm sure maraming sasabihin si, si Sir. Alam niya ng mga sudyante, kaya talagang gusto ko siya makuna. Pero, hindi na natin kasan tayo uh, i-allow ng Lord na uh, makarating this uh, morning. And again, later kung may mga questions ay uh, siya rin sa sagot, uh, para rin sa, sa topic. Okay, so let's uh, welcome uh, Sir Ronald. Pinagpala ko yung generasyon natin na dahil napakarami natin choices. No? 
madami tayong mapapagpili ang mga awit na bagay sa ating iglesia at makakatulong para lumago ang mga, ang mga tao at matulungan din na sa mga ba, bawat isa. Uh, Doon sa ina din na namin worship summit ng nakaraang semestre, sabi nga nung tagapagturo ay meron tayong buffet, hilig tayo sa eat on your can. No? Ang music uh, world ay parang buffet ngayon, ang dami-daming genre, ang dami-daming estilo. Uh, minsan, yung gusto lang natin ang natitik, gustong-gusto natin tikman. Pero madami pa tayo ang eh, tikman at maaaring mag-aralan para din sa ikalalago ng ating iglesia. Bakit po marami tayong awitin sa panahon ng ito? May lima pong bagay na nangyayari sa atin dahil kumigilos ang Panginoon sa, sa ating kalagat na. Una-una, God is not working helping His people worship Him with songs. No? Alam natin yung mga awitin na ito ay nakakatulong para express natin yung pagsamba natin sa Panginoon. Pangalawa, more than ever, ang church po natin ngayon ay intergenerational. Ibig sabihin, iba-iba ang edad, may bata, may matanda, may middle age, may mga lola, lola. At dahil sa globalization, multicultural. Dati dito lang yung Bisaya, Ilocano, Pagkapagkasingan. Pero ngayon po, sa mga iglesia, meron ka nang makikita kasama mo may Koreano, taga-India. Sino po sa inyo may mga churches na may mga ibang mga nationality na nang mga nang bahag sa inyo? Sa inyo iglesia. Meron na. No? Lalo sa metropolitan churches, madami, lalo na yung mga nasa university there. No? Kasi madami nagpupunta sa ating bansa para mag-aaral. Uh, number three, God gives us the inspiration to renew all songs. Alam natin yung kay Chris Tom din na eh, Amazing Grace ay nadagdagan ng bagong awit, ng bagong, bagong lyrics. Sa kamarami ng mga awit na, na, na nakukumpo sa panahon ngayon. At maaaring kayo ay meron kayong mga sarili ninyong mga compositions din. So number four, binibigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng mga bagong awit. Kasi sabi nga niya, sing, uh, sing to the Lord a new song. At ang inspiration ng Banal na Spirit ay din ang nagbibigay sa atin as we face new situations sa ating buhay kristyano, nakakalikha tayo ng mga awit. You know? So madaming mga awit. And ikalima po, napakadali po ng access. May Spotify, may uh, YouTube. Na madaling madali magkaroon. Hindi mo kailangan gumastos para makapag-aral, makapakinig, makapanood ng mga bago gusto. So yan po yung mga uh, bagay na meron tayo ngayon. Uh, next slide po. Ngayon po, turn of the century, 21st century na tayo. Uh, nung nakaraang siglo, bago magpalit ang, ang dekada. Number one po, maraming contemporary music na lumabas. Uh, pangalawa, nabuhay uli ang paggamit ng mga hymns sa ibang mga churches. Nakita nila yung kagandahan ng mga lyrics na luma. Nakita nila kung gano'ng kayaman yung experience ng mga tao na mga manang palitaya ng nagdaang panahon. At nilalapatan na nila ito ng mga bagong tono o bagong estilo. Pero yung mga iba, gusto pa rin nila yung dating, uh, dating tono. Pero minsan, ginagawa ng mga temporary. Ang sinasaliwa ng gitara, binibilisan, uh, iniiba yung mga accord yung mga chords. So, itong mga hymnals din po natin nagpabago. Um, yung tinatawag na anthologization. Yung mga dating mga praise and worship na alam ninyo, nagiging classic na sila. Tapos nasasama na sa hymnal. Nakikita niyo po ba? Na, sino po sa inyo nakakapag-booklap ng mga bagong hymnals? Yung mga bagong hymnals na yun, galing sa Amerika. Yung mga well-loved contemporary Christian music natin, nandun na. Nandun na sa hymns. No, kaya ang hymns po na bago ay hindi lang yung mga ay hindi lang siya lumang mga awitin. Kaya 
Buklatin niyo po yung mga bago na publish ng mga news kung magkakaroon kayo ng pagkakataon. Magkakasama na po yung mga lumang mga hino that's to the test of time sa kayong mga bago at mga tatawag natin mga classic contemporary Christian music. Na ito ay ano, na, na, na test na ng panahon na nakapag-minister sa atin. So na-organize siya para sa makapag-respond tayo at makasamba sa panahon. Next po ng mga bagong awitin na pwede pa natin tingnan. Marami rin pong nakocompose ngayon ng mga scriptural paraphrase songs. O yung mismo lyrics ay gano'ng mismo sa Biblia. I-google nyo lang o i-type nyo lang sa YouTube, scriptural, uh, scripture or verse song, ang dami. May mga composer na volumes, hindi lang pambata ito. So, madami po tayong ma-explore. Susunod po ay contemporary hymns na tulad alam natin yung uh, In Christ Alone, no? Nila Christine uh, ng, uh, ni, ng mga gems, no? Tapos, uh, may mga bago rin kong theme. No? Kasi maraming persecution sa uh, global yung mga Kristiyano. Uh, may mga songs ngayon na ang tawag ay songs of lament. No? Kasi minsan ang church, dalawa lang na alam na kanta. Masaya at mas masaya. Mabilis at mas mabilis. E pa paano yung mga membro natin na dumaranas ng pagsubok, dumaranas ng problema, ng persecution, dahil sa kanilang pananampalatay, wala silang boses, wala silang mga awit. No? Kaya, may mga composer na luminika sila ng mga awit dahil sa ganitong mga karanasan. Uh, kahit sa tungkol sa social injustices, kahit sa persecution ng mga trials. So, uh, wag niyo po isipin na ang mga songs sa church ay dapat masaya na. No? Kasi minsan ang iglesia natin dumataan as a whole sa matinding pagsubo. No? So, kailangan mayroon tayo mga awitin na mali ay isa sa tinig ang mga dinadaan ng, ng iglesia. Susunod po, dahil sa globalization, yung mga global songs. Ano po ito? Ito yung mga awitin ng mga kristyano sa ibang lupain, ibang bansa. Nakaawit na ba kayo ng mga awit ng mga kristyano sa Thailand, sa Japan, sa South America? Marami pong awitin na kailangan natin ma matutunan kasi it expresses the, the unity of the body of Christ sa buong mundo. At kung nasasali lang tayo dun sa estilo natin, we, we are missing a lot. Sa, sa experience ng church worldwide, at marami rin po tayo matutunan theologically sa kung paano na uunawaan ng ibang mga kristyano sa ibang lupain ang kung paano na nakikilala ang mga ito. Uh, so, uh, ito pong isang album dito, introduce ito ng Calvin uh, Institute or isang seminaryo sa Amerika. Sa mahigit dalawang pong awit, may dalawang Filipino songs na included. Uh, itong isa naman uh, galing sa isang uh, Mennonite naman itong nag-produce na ito sa Canada. Uh, sabi nila, sharing the songs and prayers of Christians worldwide can have a significant impact upon our worship life. By engaging in global songs, we practice hospitality to people from a vast array cultural background. So, ano ba kung may kuryano sa church ninyo? Di ba po maa-adhome siya? Kasi nag-homesick sila. Kung may maaawit kayong Korean Christian songs. O kaya merong ang upang nationality yung nandito dito na, na mga kung maaawit yung awit nila. So, uh, Doon sa pag uh, for instance, yung example lang na sa klase namin, meron na Chinese galing from mainland, nagdodoktor eh. Tapos nung inawit namin yung, o oh, alam niyo yung kanta namin? Oo. Oh. So parang may yung sense of ano na, connection na. So, uh, may bridge na kayo to share the gospel. Kasi yung mga klase namin, 
wala ko alam kung sa kanila yun. Kung gawin kasi sila sa main natin siya. So, ito yung dun sa album, may dalawang Filipino songs na nakasama. Uh, pero in English yung yung words, dito lang babagod uh, for the first four time. Okay, para po sa mga conducting majors or mga church musicians, uh, ito po isa sabi ni Robert Weber. Si Robert Weber, ang um, nagtapag ng isang institute sa Amerika, sa Florida, uh, na pinatawag ng Institute, institute of Worship Studies. Na bago yung field din po ito. Uh, ito po yung sabi niya, I think it is important that music ministers understand that their role in the church has shifted into pastoral ministry in many ways. So, hindi na lang po daw mga musikero o music kami, mga music sa simbahan. Musicians are no longer confined to the corner of music, but musicians have stepped up into the world of pastoral ministry. Music ministry or worship leadership, or whatever you want to call it, is now inclusive of teaching, so we see in a pastoral and ministerial healing, counseling through music. So, lumalawag po, mga kapatid, yung ating ministry. No? Uh, and so, it has broadened to the point, and I think that it should broaden, that there is an extraordinary shift that has occurred here and anyone who powers back say, hey, I'm just a party director, eh. yan is na ako eh. Will be not be attuned to the kind of shifts occurring in congregations and con in congregational leadership. What was formerly called a music minister today is really a full-blown master. Kaya maganda yung puso uh, natin dito sa PBS. Dahil AB Theology in Church Music tayo. We have a very, very good foundation sa ating belief, sa ating faith, and that can be used uh, effectively sa pagpili natin ng songs, pag-aalaga natin sa mga uh, member ng atas nila. Okay, punta tayo sa education. Ano nangyayari sa music education? Uh, sa mga balak magturo ng music sa sa eskwela natin, base po sa pag-aaral ngayon, nakikita na ang music ay very effective tool to teach other subjects like science, math, engineering, architecture, kahit ano po. Uh, uh, pag kinantahan mo yung mga mahihirap na concepts, madaling maalala. And yung pangalawa po, Music literacy is for everyone. Ito po yung talagang uh, ang musika po ay hindi lang para sa mga elite na mga tao, kundi ang music ay para po sa lahat. At uh, dapat po makunawa ang pagkatala ng lahat ng tao. Um, ito yung ginagawa namin sa department ngayon. Uh, Sinusunda namin ang method of philosophy ni Koday. Koday spelling, pero hanggarin siya, so walang L at walang Y, pag-I, parang bisaya. <laughs> okay, so ano po yung method na to? Uh, ito po yung method na dinidevelop yung musical skills ng bawat isa na nag-uumpisa sa mga kapatak, sa mga bata. Tapos ang mga awitin yung nag-uumpisahan ay yung mga folk songs at mga children songs. At hand sign, kaya dito yung dito sila nagkukotay ang design kami ngayon. It was introduced in Hungary, pero ang galing ito, ang, ang development nito ay ang galing sa iba't ibang mga bansa at panahon. But it is now used in many countries at meron pong Kodai Society here in the Philippines. Uh, I think it was started in 1985. At uh, regularly may mga training, trainings po. So, uh, yan yung itsura niya ng bata pa siya. Nakuhay siya hanggang 1967. Uh, ito po yung filosofiya niya. Anyway, 
the level of teacher's training kasi nga sa Hungary, katulad din dito sa Pilipinas, napakapaba ng kalidad ng music education. Kasi po kung mataas ang music education natin sa Pilipinas, by this time you can all read notes. You can all sing. Pag nakita niyo yung pyesa, kaya niyong basahe. Pero hindi po, di ba? Kasi ang teacher natin, PE teacher na lang puro ng music. Sabihin niya, quarter to, pero hindi mo naman laman. Ano yung quarter to? So ito pong philosophy na to, ay nakakaya experience ng bata. And sabi niya, everyone is capable and has the right to musical literacy. So it is your right to know, to be skillful in music ayon sa kanya. So hindi lang dapat music majors. Kaya po kami noon dito, meron ang lahat po ng estudyante ng video sa panahon namin, may introduction to music. At pag umawit po dito sa chapel, nagpo-four parts po ang mga estudyante. So sana mababalik natin yan. Uh, hindi lang mga music makers sa mga uh, magaling magpasa ng notes. Kumanta dahil tayong mga Pilipino ay very gifted no? sa pagdating sa music. Music education must begin with the very young, pero po, kung nahuli na kayo, pwede pa naman humabog. Kasi ang Kodai method, hinahasa niya ang tenga mo, pinabibilis niya yung pagbasa mo ng notes, at uh, ini-improve niya ang musical literacy. So, masaya po siya kasi it involves games, movement, hindi ka pa nakaupong ganyan. Kaya, and sequential from simple hanggang sa context. Maraming mo nag-aarap ng music teachers sa iba-ibang parte ng mundo. Pumupunta pa sila sa Hungary para lang mag-aaral. No? Dahil gusto nila to. Sa China, meron na sa mga societies in Japan, may sa, sa Amerika, sa UK, uh, even in other parts of the world. Kasi nakita nila how effective and how simple it is to teach music. Children and adults. Okay, po. Sa akin nga na natito po ang resulta. Studies have shown that the Kodai method improves intonation. Kasi matitinig mo yung note bago mo ang kahit. Diba? Ang mga music majors, matitinig mo yung do. So, mamimension mo kung ano yung note mo susunod ka kahit. Yung rhythm, yung skills, music literacy, and the ability to sing in increasingly complex parts. So, outside music, it has been shown to improve perceptual functioning, uh, concept formation, motor skills, and performance in other academic areas such as reading and math. So, yun po yung uh, base sa pag-aaral. Ito po yung benefits ng natutunod na ito. Okay po, kumba tayo sa fellowship. Or how do we identify the body? Okay, meron pong branch ng music uh, matagal ko sa Amerika pero meron na ngayon dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya yung mga music majors na gusto ang ministry na ito, meron na pong eskwelahan na ma-offer nito. Uh, may tinatawag pong music therapy. So, ginagamit po ang music for healing and uh, it is established ng profession para kang doktor. Uh, dito sa Pilipinas, may master, may masteral course sa Saint Paul uh, University sa Manila. Um, yung mga nag-aaral sa ibang bansa, nalik sila dito para establish yung course. Um, mada, sa ngayon po, ang ina-address ng mga uh, areas dun sa kurso na yun ay helping children with learning disabilities. So yung mahirap yung medyo slow learner o yung mga ADHD at kung ano ano pa, ah, na-address po sila at nagtulungan yung mga bata at nagsasuffer sa ganitong mga kondisyon. Uh, pero hindi lang po yan. Uh, yung susunod kong slides, makikita natin that there are other areas na ang music therapy ay nakakatulog. Yung people na naka-experience ng trauma. Katulad yung mga tao sa milita milita uh, military, sa kera. Mga, may mga traumatic experiences sila. Lalo yun yung galing sa Middle East, pagbalik nila sa Amerika, hindi sila makatulog, they have nightmares. Yung mga iba naman yan, autism, saka yung ibang mga disorders, learning disorders, as 
Alzheimer's disease. Uh, people with persons with correctional and forensic settings, yan, yung pwede na lang. Right? Uh, yung crisis and trauma, music therapy and medicine, mental health, music education, pain management, uh, special education, music therapy, and young children. So, madrami po ang application ng field ng music. At kung may kasanayan kayo nito, at sa church ninyo may mga ganitong mga senaryo, uh, makakatulong nyo tayo. Next po, uh, last, pero pinaka-exciting, uh, evangelism and missions. Uh, may branch po ng music na research lang ng research. Ang tawag po music research. Or may isa pa siyang branch ang tawag ethnomusicology. Hatiin natin, ano po yung ethne? Yung mga nag-aaral ng mga lingwahe. Ano po yung ethne? People. Tapos music. Music. Tapos logi. Study. Okay? So ito yung ethnomusicology sa branch ng, ng music na inaaral yung music culture ng bawat uh, lahi. No? Dati, Research lang sila ng research para sinesave nila yung music culture ng mga tao bago mawala. So picture sila ng picture, record lang sila ng record. Uh, at ayaw nilang galawin yung kultura na yun. Uh, pero ngayon po, nagkaroon siya ng panibagong, mas bagong branch. Applied Ethnomusicology. So, hindi lang sila mag-research, hindi lang sila mag-document. Ito po ang mga researcher na to will use, will help those people na kailangan ng mga bagong awitin base sa kanilang condition at kultura. Na bakit po ito exciting? Dahil po sa development na ito, nagkaroon po ng tinatawag na ethnodoxology. Okay? Helping people groups praise and worship the true God in their own heart language. No? Uh, kung nakarating kayo sa mga, mga language communities natin sa mundo, pagdating po natin doon, matatawa tayo kasi ginagaya nila ang mga awit natin dito. At mali-mali. Tapos hindi nila naiintindihan. Uh, may isang example kami na laging ginagawa. The Lord reigns. Alam yan, no? The Lord reigns. Pagdating sa mundo, ano na daw ko? Alam niyo ba? Dolores. Dolores. Pari Joyce, si Joyce. Pari Joyce, si Joyce. Kasi hindi nila awit. Hindi nila na i-indihan. Na matatawa tayo, pero dapat makawa tayo. Kasi ginagaya nila. Kasi meron pa yung how great thou art. How green thine eyes. Ang layo. So, dahil po sa development na to, yung mga visionary na musically inclined sila at nandun sila sa bundok para maisulat sa sariling wika ng mga katutubo ang, ang Biblia, natuklasan nila that they can help people not only have the Word of God written in their heart language, but also help them have their dignity, uh, yung sa kanilang dignidad, uh, tumaas yung pagkilala nila sa kanilang sarili, at also to use their music and their culture, their dances, their tunes, to worship them. At kung natutunan ito ng mga language communities, mas totoo sa kanila yung worship nila kasi yung tindihan nila yung mga awit nila. So, ito po yung uh, very exciting kasi when, when I was introduced way back in 2009, I thought that as a musician, as a music minister, I would grow old inside the church. And sabi ko, wow, makakarating na ako sa mga gusto mong puntahan ng mga uh, lugar. And I have a mission to help. So, meron po mga 
may ibang mga international organizations ngayon, uh, International Council of Ethnodoxologies, saka every four years ba, merong GCOM, ang tawag po dito, Global Consultation on Mission, on Music and Missions. Uh, noong 2009, tama pa ko 2010, sa Singapore ginawa. So, we were sponsored to go there. Tapos, we were given training noong 2009 sa Thailand. Kasi yung pinakamalapit na training, one-week training for this is sa university sa Thailand, university sa, sa, sa Thailand. So, ito po yung mga nangyayari ngayon. Malawak po ang gawain ng Panginoon. Uh, yung huli pong huling, uh, yung video po, ipapakita. Uh, wala mo pala akong sabi. Yun po, nasabi ko na naman, hindi na apply ito. Halimbawa, may problema sila sa, kahit po sa social, sa community nila. Halimbawa, parami nagkakasakit. Kasi hindi sila marunong magugas ng kamay. A song will help children to remember to wash their hands. To, to prevent the spread of diseases. Mga ganyan po. So, hindi lang siya founded by the church community. Pero kung itong apply the anthropology, may help the community kung ano man yung pangangitaman. Okay. Uh, yung video po ay this was our uh, work, yung tulong po na ginawa namin sa Koron, Tagbanwa. Uh, yung grupo po namin went there for every, every summer. Nauna yung isa namin kaibigan, tapos yung tatlo po magkasama na kami doon. Um, sa Palawan po, yung mismong island ng Koron, maraming po doon mang, na mga mana ng palataya. We, we have helped them regain their sense of dignity. And after po nung four summers na yun, gumawa sila ng ceremony to, uh, to make a commitment to preserve their culture. Kasi nawawala na. Uh, yung interview ko, hindi ko alam na i-video pa na yun at makikipapapanood. Kagigising ko lang sa so magulo ang buho ko. Pero hindi lang naman ako ang, ang pinigyo lang. Ang maganda po dito, yung, as we show this video to different people group, they, they are being encouraged. Kasi yung video pa na lang yung mga tagbanwa, sabi nila, tagbanwa means people of the place. Marami kong matutulang ko kultura, saka spiritually sila pa yung tingin mo ikaw yung mas mature, mas mature pa sila. When they pray, they pray with their eyes open, their hands lifted up, and uh, their, uh, their eyes are uh, looking for what is going to happen. So pag nagka-pray kami, tayo yung uh, manalangin tayo ganyan. So, madami po. So, uh, ito po yung last na ano ko, yung video. Uh, I hope you will pray and consider all of these questions. Kung may questions po, after po ng video.
Psalm 150 says, We're to praise the Lord with horns, cymbals, and strings. Over 50 times in the book of Psalms, we're told to sing of God's praise. Psalm 47 is particularly clear. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. The Bible is filled with references to music from the dawn of creation to the final scenes in Revelation. Job 38, 7. Revelation 15, 3. But if we don't understand God's purpose for music in worship, we can misuse it. Even worse, it can rob God of the glory we want to give Him. How music helps us. God wants us to use music to worship Him in spite of the problems that can arise. Apparently, God thinks it's worth the effort. Here are four reasons why. One, music stirs up and expresses God glorifying emotion. Our deepest, strongest, purest affections should be reserved for God Himself. And He gave us singing to help us express them. Half-hearted praise is an oxymoron. It doesn't make any sense. Listen to Jonathan Edwards on this. The duty of singing praises to God seems to be given wholly to excite and express religious affections. There is no other reason why we should express ourselves to God in verse rather than in prose and with music, except that these things have a tendency to move our affections. Some Christians repress their emotions as they sing. May mga Christiana, di ba na? Pinipigilan nila yung emotion nila pag uh, umakanta. Ayaw nila na may uh, maramdaman silang uh, kakaibang emosyon. Uh, tiniisip nila na pag uh, napigilan nila ito ay mature sila. Mature ako, hindi ako basta-basta nadadala sa mga ganyang uh, emosyon. But the problem is emotionalism, not emotions. Emotionalism pursues feelings and an end in themselves. It's one thing to feel something with no regard for how that feeling is produced or its ultimate purpose. Emotionalism can also view heightened emotions as the invaluable sign that God is present. In contrast, the emotions that singing is meant to evoke are a response to who God is and what He has done. But in the yung emotion that dapat meron tayo, response siya, tugod siya to sa pagkakilala natin sa ating Panginoon at sa kung anuman yung mga nagawa ng isa. So pag kumakata tayo, yung emosyon na nararamdaman natin ay dahil yan sa uh, pagkakilala natin sa ating Panginoon, sa kabutihan niya, sa biyaya niya, sa atin. Vibrant singing enables us to combine truth about God seamlessly with passion for God. Doctrine and devotion, mind and heart. Number two, music helps us reflect the glory and activity of the triune God. God is a singing God. Do you agree? We read in Zephaniah 3.17 that He will rejoice over us with singing. Matthew 26.30, Jesus sang a hymn with His disciples on the night before He died. And Ephesians 5.18-19 indicates, that the Holy Spirit inspires songs in believers' hearts as He fills them. That's one reason we often sense God's presence when we gather to sing His praises. Yung Madam na Espiritu ay kasama natin na sa kalagitnaan natin, ini-inspire ang mga awit natin. What a great encouragement! Binigay niya sa atin itong musika ang pag-awit para padalimin, padagupin ang relasyon natin sa kanya. God sings, the Father sings, the Son sings, Jesus sings, the Holy Spirit sings. How can we keep from singing? Three, music helps us remember truth about God. God Himself used music as a means to help people remember His Word. As the Israelites were about to enter the Promised Land, God told Moses to teach them a song. So that when many evils and troubles have come upon them, this storm shall come confront them as a witness, for it will live and for God in the mouths 
of their offspring. Deuteronomy 31, 21. We remember what we sing, and nothing is more important to remember than God's Word. That is why it is important to sing songs that are biblical. Kung baga, kung may LSS lang rin tayo, sana yung mga malalalim na lyrics na. Yung doctrinal, malalim yung theology, and hindi kung ano-anong maulit-ulit lang na lyrics. Music produced feelings will fade, but God's living and active word will continue working in our hearts, renewing our minds, and strengthening our faith. Fourth, music helps us express our unity in the gospel. In scripture, the overwhelming majority of references to singing are corporate. Madalas pagkababangit sa Bible yung singing, dalasan, it's talking about corporate singing. Hindi yung nag-iisa lang uh, umakad. In the New Testament, two of the most specific passages on singing refer to addressing one another and teaching and admonishing one another. We become a family, a chosen race, a holy nation through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Singing glorifies God by expressing the unity we enjoy through the gospel. Tanong lang iba, what kind of music? Ano nga bang klase ng music? Uh, yung, yung gagamitin natin. God obviously wants us to worship Him with music, but He hasn't given us as many details as we often like to know. So we aren't sure what music from Bible times actually sounded like. Diba? Siguro pinakamalapit na yung Western, uh, yung Middle Eastern folk song. Pero hindi naman natin yung ginagamit uh, ngayon. Madami pang ibang mga concerns na hindi na address the Bible. Questions like, how much music is too much? Should songs be passed down through the years or should each generation write its own? Should our music be, be universal or more culturally localized? Should songs be liturgical or freeform? Should the singing be spread throughout our time together or happen all at once? Diba? Ano ba ito? Uh, first 30 minutes, kantahan? O first one hour? Doon ba dapat tayo kumanta? O kanta? Siguro kayo din may mga questions. Tapos uh, ako dito. Bob, Bob Kaufman suggests three principles for making music in the church with specific ways to apply them. Sabi niya, music should serve the lyrics. Sing songs that say something. The words to our songs should be as strong and memorable as the tunes we set them to or the arrangements we put behind them. Minsan masikat pa yung tono no, sa, sa lyrics ng kanta. Di ba? Experience yun ba yun? Mas naalala pa yung beat, mas naalala pa yung intro or yung instrumental. Uh, rap rather than yung content or yung lyrics. Lyrics are more important. Ano ba ibang klase ng lyrics na mga kanta natin? May objective lyrics, may subjective lyrics, may reflective lyrics. Objective lyrics tell us something true about God that helps us know Him better. Most but not all hymns from the 18th century tend to focus on objective truths. Di ba? Yung makikita niya sa mga hymns natin. Madami, hindi naman lahat na meron yung mga iba dyan na hindi yung objective. Yun yung subjective. Subjective lyrics express responses to God such as love, longing, conviction, or adoration. I don't want to be dogmatic and say that subjective lyrics are bad or evil. Don't assume that a song that uses a lot of first-person pronouns is man-centered. Psalm 86 uses the personal pronouns I, me, mine 31 times in 17 verses. But you're never left wondering who the focus is. God delights in strong emotions that are a response to reveal the items. Reflective lyrics describe what we're doing as we worship God. We bring our offering, we praise, we sing, we lift up our hands. These three categories are in hard and fast divisions, and many songs contain all three perspectives. 
all three can contribute to strong lyrics. But when we don't major on objective truth, our songs can quickly drift into emotionalism and self-absorption. We start to worship our own experiences. Again, that doesn't mean all our songs need to be theological treatises. But if our primary criteria for using a song has to do with whether it's popular or enjoyable to sing, we're going to have a hard time persuading anyone that truth matters more than music. Adjust your musical arrangements and volume. Madalas ang iniisip ng mga nasa music team or yung band, total, hindi naman ako sa harap. Parang wala nang tigil yan at dudugtok. Kailangan matutunan natin na, na, ba, na, ng bawat isa na hindi lang kailangan sabay-sibay silang tumutugtog. At laging malakas lahat. Kadalasan ng comments sa music team, so ang lakas naman ng, ng band, hindi na marinig yung, uh, yung kinakanda. Minsan subukan nyo sa practice, uh, na try ninyo na. First one, guitar lang. First one, piano lang last two choruses, drums na. Di ba? Be uh, creative. Explore ninyo yung, yung arrangement, even yung volume ng sound. Tawag na na yung dynamics. Hindi puro malakas. Minsan maganda rin na merong mga acapella part. Di ba? Uh, mas naririnig mo yung, yung words. In the New Testament, the predominant sound throughout the meaning is the singing of the congregation. They are the real worship team. So yun, uh, check your volume. Minsan, uh, kailangan lumayo dun sa stage para mas marinig mo. Kung balance ba o... Pwede mong tanong ka ng isa. O pakinggan mo nga dun sa bandang likod kung ano uh, the thing. Don't know. Use uh, instrumental solos wisely. So sana tagal lang dito, no? Pero, uh, na 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 the word cella appears frequently in the Psalms. Many scholars think it refers to a musical interlude for meditation or reflection. While that can be proven, there are numerous passages where God commands instrumental music to praise Him. For example, Psalm 33 3, or 71 22 or 153 3 to 5. But a Sunday morning isn't a concert or a recital where an audience sit back to hear musicians use their gifts. Hindi naman tayo nagpunta sa church para mag-jamming, di ba? Minsan, mas mahaba yung instrumenta, parang mas nagwa-wonder na yung isip ng tao. Di ba? Parang sana kung bakanta na sila, nagre-reflect na sana sila ng mga biblical na mga lyrics. Pero dahil nag-solo na napakatagal, si musician, naging distraction pa o hindi pa na-serve yung dapat purpose may be willing to forego instrumental sections that only serve as filler or that delay congregational singing unnecessary focus on projecting lyrics if your church doesn't use hymnals or song books the person handling the projection of lyrics plays a crucial role minsan parang siya pa yung song leader no? wala nang magawa yung nasa harap hindi ka tayo yung filas na mali na ako na yung slide, na mali yung lyrics. So napakahalaga ng, ng role pag pinoproject natin yung lyrics. Use the supportive music. This has been done badly so many times. But scripture seems to make a connection between hearing music and being sensitive to God's voice. It's the first Chronicles 25.1, those who led the worship at the tabernacle prophesies with lyres, with harps, and with cymbals accompanying them. Elisha was unable to speak the word of the Lord to the kings of Israel and Judah until a musician came and played for him. God seems to have established an, an, an undefined but discernible relationship between music and the way we hear his word. Music affects our emotions which in turn can make us more receptive to, or at least aware of, the words we sing and hear. We 
can speak dogmatically about this relationship, but neither can we deny it. We don't need to play music constantly or seek to manipulate people's emotions. Kasi sa tingin tayo thinking ng mga musicians, kailangan ko tumutok, tum kailangan ko background uh, music. Spoken words don't always have to be accompanied by a musical background. But in the right way and at the right time, instrumental music can be an effective complement and support to the spoken word. Tapit na po. Music should display variety. What did Paul mean when he encouraged us to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs? Diba sa Colossians 3, 16, Ephesians 5, 19? No one's completely sure. Most scholars agree he seems to be encouraging diversity in the songs we use to praise God. Diba? Hindi puro hymns, hindi puro songs about ganito. Diversity. Psalms might be referring to the Psalter, hymns to the songs that praise Christ, and spiritual songs to more spontaneous expressions. If that's the case, Paul is encouraging us to sing all our songs, short, long, fast, slow, old, new, with gratefulness to God. Lastly, music should edify the church. The best music enables people to genuinely and consistently magnify the greatness of the Savior in their hearts, minds, and wills. That's a standard that will never change from culture to culture, generation to generation, church to church. When we meet to worship God, we're not aiming to glorify creativity, but the Creator. And as a practical matter, edifying the church means using songs that everyone can sing. Diba? Kailangan pag kung musician ka, kung song leader ka, isipin mo, kaya pa nilang katahin yung kataka O dahil gusto mo lang siyang katahin. Gusto mo lang try kung bagay sa sa'yo. Yung range mo niya, sobrang taas o sobrang baba. Hindi na masabayan mo. Sobrang complicated ba ng rhythm? Di ba? May mga ilan ba sa congregation na pwede ang i-consider baka ma-stumble siya. Di ba? O baka hindi siya makakanta. Instead na mag-worship siya, eh, puro negative na yung nasa isip. Mga ganong mga considerations. <coughs> Makakatulong ba ito na makapag-worship <coughs> sila o makakadistract lang? Dahil isipin nila, bakit ba ganitong klase ng music ang ginamit nila? May kayasan ba? O may mas, or mas masasabi bang may kaguluhan yung klase ng music na ginamit? So yung mga ganun, uh, pwede natin consider. Tayo ay part na music team. I believe marami dito. Kahit hindi mga music majors, uh, you, you are involved sa music ministry. Young Church. So, napakalaking uh, responsibility na meron tayo at napakaganda uh, privilege nito na talagang kagaya na naman kita yung isang uh, yung music hindi lang naman kanta-kanta para ka nagtutulong, di ba? Para ka na rin nag-mimisyon para ka na rin nag-pipitch minsan gamit yung mga songs na na pinakanta. So, pwede rin siyang tingnan uh, sa ganun. Okay, wala tayong time pero may mga urgent questions siguro. Tingnan natin kung pwede pa namin siya.